Thank you. Sir. Now I invite Professor S. B. S. Abekon to present an oration on Professor Eturei Raja. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Dr. Uday Disanayaka, Dean, Faculty of Engineering, Professor Janaka Vijayatunga, Head of the Department of Civil Engineering, Mrs. Uh, Rajeshwari Thure Raja, and the other family members of Professor Thure Raja, who are joining us through the internet. Respected former members of the academic staff who have served the Faculty of Engineering in various capacities in the past, other heads of departments of Faculty of Engineering, members of the academic staff, assistant registrar, senior assistant bursa, senior assistant librarian, and other members of the non-academic staff, or distinguished past students of the faculty who have contributed to the fund that was collected for development of Ethur Raja Memorial Conference Room. Special invitees, well wishers, all other members who are connected through virtual platforms, my dear postgraduate and undergraduate students. Needless to say, I am I consider myself privileged and honored to deliver this oration on behalf of the committee that was entrusted with the project that we were so dearly involved in for a long time, development of a conference room in the name of Professor Turi Raja. I plan to start this uh, with some, some biography of Professor Turi Raja as one of the greats who has contributed to the faculty. And then I will try to establish why we consider him as one of the greats who contributed to our faculty as a member of the academic staff and as the dean of the faculty, and also as one who have instilled so many qualities in those who studied under him, and also in those who have associated him in various capacities. A. Thuri Raja was born on 10th of November, 1934 at the Vadamarachi division, Jaffna. He was educated at Udupidi American Missionary School, and at the famous Hartley College for his primary and secondary education, respectively. Professor Turaraja was one of the most respected and accomplished past pupils of Hartley, which in itself by no means a small achievement. Considering the array of distinguished personalities that have been produced by Hartley since 1838, some names that come to mind are Mr. Ratnasiri Vikramanayaka, Prime Minister of Ceylon, Sri Lanka, and former Prime Minister of Sri Lanka, and K.B. Ratnayaka, former Speaker of Parliament, Professor K.D. Arul Pragasam, former Vice Chancellor of Eastern University, Rudra Rajasingham, former Inspector General of Police, and V. Ananda Sangari, leader of TULF. In 1953, young Thurai Raja passed the university entrance examination obtaining highest marks in the stream and was admitted to the Faculty of Engineering of the University of Ceylon, predestined to the faculty in which we hold this function today. After graduating with the first class honors degree in 1957, he joined the Public Works Department as a junior engineer. In the year 1958, the year I was born, he left for his higher studies at the University of Cambridge, United Kingdom, and worked with Professor Kenneth H. Roscoe, as uh, mentioned by our head of the department. His research area was shear properties of soils, and Professor Raja's work at Cambridge is recognized through last 64 years as the pioneering and some of the key contribution to the development of a constitutive relation for soils. After obtaining his PhD in 1961, Dr. Thurai Raja worked for about an year in the United Kingdom and returned to Sri Lanka in 1962. 
after resuming duties at the university of colombo university of ceylon actually he came uh, university of ceylon in colombo then he came from colombo where the faculty of engineering was temporarily located to the its permanent home here in peradiri in 1964 he continued his fundamental research in soil mechanics at peradiri and became a full professor at the relatively young age of 37 in 1971 during my undergraduate years at peradiri 47 years back professor durira raja became the dean of this faculty in fact he was the dean of the faculty from 1975 to 1977 and also from february 1982 to february 1985 i can still remember his imposing yet strikingly simple stature that we all loved so much at the faculty since that time i have known professor turaraja in several capacities but in my mind his soul is mostly cemented as a true academic a great teacher and a great human being i consider him as a role model for any young member of the academic staff of a university i consider him as one of the persons from whom we as his students and colleagues were able to capture some of the basics of being an ethical university teacher ladies and gentlemen the central question of ethics is what ought want to do what ought want to do the greek philosopher socrates asked this question from his student plato and today we are still trying to find the answer to this question let me cite some examples from professor turiraja's life that has shed sufficient light in answering this question from the point of view of an university academic when it comes to university teachers first and foremost a good teacher should engage fully in his or her job as we all know the core of uh, teaching as presented in many books goes tell me and i will forget show me and i will remember let me do it and i will understand in some scholarly articles this say slightly differently uh, saying that uh, the mediocre teacher tells the good teacher explains and the superior teacher demonstrates and some go on a step further to say that the great teacher inspires prest raja was one of the great teachers who had inspired us he would go way beyond his normal teaching duties due to help his students the time during which we served as a young members of the teaching staff i am was to find a place abroad for higher training of course all the academic staff members were very approachable when we needed help in securing a position prof turiraja went beyond the norms in a normal day after scheduled work at about 5 pm in the evening i recall him asking one of us to call all young staff members to a lecture room i'm sure dr somaratna can remember this he would come in and start lecturing us on areas beyond the undergraduate program the lecture would go on for 2 to 3 hours in the evening the subject in subjects include not only geotechnical engineering his the field of his specialty but also mathematics mechanics finite element methods and many other latest subject areas in civil engineering there were tutorials as well he encouraged us to read scientific papers he would give me a journal paper and request me to explain it to the group comprising him and my other colleagues the next day this forced learning helped us all of help all of us tremendously when we went out for postgraduate training abroad it has helped us improve our presentation skills some of the advanced subjects taught us taught at masters and phd levels were not new to us as they had been covered in professor raja's informal lectures 
naturally all of us were at the top of our classes at our respective universities abroad ladies and gentlemen we know that as university teachers there are many other special areas we have we need to focus ourselves on one of them is the need of developing a strong value system within ourselves that includes punctuality honesty dependability approachability simplicity empathy etc now let me go back in time to the year 1976 the year in which a prolonged student unrest here at peradeniya ended with the death of wm virasurya a first year art student here at peradeni recording the first such incident in the history of university education in sri lanka after that tragic incident the university of peradeni was closed for quite a long period during this time the geotechnical laboratory of faculty of engineering was loaded with soil testing mainly due mainly for the saman leva hydropower and irrigation project my first close association with professor thuriraja began when the laboratory hired me and another student from my batch to assist in the testing program as we were on an indefinite vacation it was not mandatory to sign in and sign out as we were given tasks to complete however professor raja informed us that there is a book by the entrance to the laboratory and if we like we can sign in and out so when he said that of course we had no option so the end result of the exercise was that through the entire period of our involvement with the laboratory we failed to sign in before professor thuri raja and it was so difficult to leave laboratory after him <laughs> every single day we witness a thuri raja signed in at 5:30 am or 6 am we all will see him leave only after about 7 pm or 8 pm needless to say i learned a great deal from him not only on soil mechanics and geotechnical engineering but also on work ethics and punctuality i have been a university teacher for over 40 years and i have never cancelled a lecture and i am very punctual in my work my students know that i am never late for lectures and i expect them to follow suit one other area that i want to touch upon is views of prof thuriraja on consultancy work generally consultancy work is undertaken by academic staff of the universities and also practicing engineers i recall in the year 1979 after i was absorbed into the teaching staff at peradeniya prof thuriraja called all the new recruits to the academic staff and gave us a lecture on how we should conduct ourselves as professional engineers in particular he discussed consultancy work he said that as engineers it was not only all right but also is our duty to engage in consultancy work he said that when an outsider or a semi government organization or a consult construction company needs our help as professionals we are entitled to charge money for the service the important thing to remember was that the service must be the priority and money should be secondary he went on to emphasize that the first thing to bear in mind was that you must assure yourself that you are qualified and experienced enough to take up the consultancy job number 1 the second important thing is that the consultancy assignment should not interfere with your duties of your employment in any manner he told us that if these two conditions are fulfilled then you can work out the total cost for the service that we will be providing if the client agrees for your fee or if we are happy to do that job for free either way then you can take up the job our guru was very particular in advising us that we should never ask for an advance he said that we should complete the job and hand over the final report to the client before presenting him or her with the invoice 
if the client makes the payment we should take it if not we should not worry about it even if we had money for out of phone pocket he said that in either case he said we should be happy that we had done a job of work that would eventually benefit the sri lankan public who have already paid for education before concluding i must also state one more important quality that i have witnessed in professor raja patriotism a word that is being used misused misinterpreted and abused heavily these days professor raja truly loved sri lanka more than many i have associated in my life he used to say on many occasions that the people of this country have paid for education through their noses and hence we owe a lot to them every year he used to call those who were about to leave for higher studies and insisted them that they should return and serve this country and its people i noted his strong patriotism more profoundly at the time during which i was completing my masters degree at university of british columbia canada the year was 1983 in which ethnic troubles broke out in sri lanka in an unprecedented manner Professor Thuriraja was in Peradeniya and he was requested to vacate his house by the then vice chancellor i think it was professor lesley panditratna apparently to, apparently to protect him from a possible mob attack they had to live in one of the student residences with other members of the academic staff who were also asked to move there my supervisor in canada who was once the dean of the faculty there got to know about this and sent a cable the fastest mode of connecting at that time to professor thuri raja requesting him to come to canada to accept a faculty position he had secured for him at the university a few days later my supervisor called me to his room and showed me professor thuri raja's reply it contained two sentences thank you very much for your kindness and help but i will never leave my country whatever happens finally let me tell you a very personal experience of mine that demonstrates how caring a person prasthura raja is i was born and raised in udaperadini the village next to this campus and i am the only child in my family prasthura raja knew this and he sensed that my parents were very worried about my trip to canada for higher studies He also knew that my father was a heart patient and took great efforts to lessen his agony by visiting my home before my departure. In fact, he used to visit my parents quite frequently at my home with Mrs. Rajeshwari Thuraraja and their children after I left the country. Until he had to leave Peradeniya to assume a position at the Open University of Sri Lanka. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Raja left us physically on 11th June 1994 at the age of 59 years while being treated for leukemia it was 3 months after resigning from his position as the vice chancellor of university of jaffna for his because of his illness i believe once we are fully aware of who we are and what is expected of us and once we keep learning from and respect in the great teachers scholars patriots and human beings of the caliber of professor alagaya thuri raja it will not be too difficult to answer socrates question what ought one to do in situations that we do encounter i sincerely hope that the conference facility dedicated to the life and commitments of professor thuri raja will help to mold all of us and future generations of engineers to be better professionals and better human beings thank you very much